So I wanted to make a video today to address one of the biggest physics mistakes that I see uh, when students are solving physics problems. And so I have this really simple example where there's a cart on an inclined plane and the rope passes over the pulley and then there's a hanging mass on the right side over here. And you are asked to find something like theta usually, right? This is a super um, common physics one problem. And so I use this problem as the example, but this is not the problem that I that I see. And so uh, essentially to, to address that uh, issue, let's just go ahead and start solving the problem, right? So first things first, one of the problems I see, and this is not the purpose of the video, but one of the problems I see is that students, many of them, don't even start off by drawing um, the free body diagrams, right? And so you have to say, okay, normal force is perpendicular to the ramp. So let me draw that better. So that's our normal force, right? And then of course there's a tension that wants to go up the ramp and then there's some um, force due to gravity uh, going directly down. And this one, I, uh, I often, often see that students will draw it like this, right? So obviously we need to go directly down. And then over here on this, uh, on this other one here, and we're assuming no friction, right? So I'm not, I'm not putting any friction on there. Um, but over here on the hanging mass, there's this tension going up and around, right? So we're just gonna draw the tension right here. We'll go tension again, and then we'll go FG over here. And we're gonna call that FG2. And then really important that we actually label these correctly, right? So FG1 over there. And let's just say what exactly what that is. So that's M1 times G and FG2 is equal to M2 times G. Okay, so now that we've actually correctly labeled our diagram, uh, another common mistake I see with problems like this is not labeling a coordinate system, right? And so what do I mean by that, right? Well, this right here is an acceptable coordinate system, right? Everything that goes this way is in the negative direction, everything that goes this way is in the positive direction. Right, this whole system is constrained to movement along a single path, right? So even though there's multiple dimensions in this problem, like, right, you could say X direction, Y direction, right? Even though you have that, we have to remember that this, this problem is constrained to a single path motion. That is the path, right? That is the motion. So that's negative and that's positive. And then what does that mean? Well, it means that this tension over here on the right side that's pointing in the negative direction, right? So even though it's going up per se, it's not actually a positive force when you actually um, solve it using this, this coordinate system, right, that I've labeled. Um, whereas this tension over here, this one is positive, right? This one's going up the ramp along this curve. So that one is positive, okay? So that's, you know, correctly labeling uh, which forces are positive, which ones are negative according to one single convention like that, that's really helpful. So now let's go ahead and do some summation equations for each of these objects, right? So for the larger cart on the track, let's just write out, well, sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration, right? And then we have to say, well, there's a y direction and there's an x direction, right? And then let me erase uh, that, that right there, make that a little bit smaller so that we can actually analyze this better. All right, so let's actually break this into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the track, right? And so this parallel part, well, this is theta, the same theta of the ramp, right? That's the exact same theta. And so this um, perpendicular part, excuse me, is um, gonna be equal to the normal force, right? And that's M1G times cosine theta, cosine because we're at the adjacent side. And then this one is M M1G sine theta. Okay, and so now we have kind of like, a, let's say an x direction and a y direction, right? Even though this is the direction of motion, let's analyze just this object by giving it an x and a y direction that are oriented like this, where this is positive y and this is positive x, positive x is up the ramp, positive y is perpendicular to the ramp, right? So let me put that over here. And it really is important to draw that because that tells whoever is reading your work that tells them, you know, why you, why you labeled things the way that you did. It helps people to follow along. All right. So let's do the sum of the forces in the y direction real quick. 
and that is equal to zero, right? Because the cart is not magically floating above the track or magically sinking through it, right? So there is no motion um, perpendicular to the ramp. And so some of the forces in the y direction is zero. Well, that's positive n minus m1g cosine theta uh, is equal to zero. So then n is equal to m1g cosine theta. Now I did this one first because as we'll see in a second, this one doesn't actually matter. But if you're solving this problem for the first time, um, I just want to, I wanted to throw that in there. And um, now let's, uh, you know, those forces are balanced. So they're really, aren't, they're really not going to affect the motion. Now, I, I, I do want to point out this system that we're solving is a balanced system, right? So we're actually saying that there is no motion. If there was motion, it would be along this path, or it could be this direction, right? So it doesn't really matter. We just picked a path and said that the motion would be along that direction. Um, but we're actually solving for a balanced system anyway. So in a balanced system, the forces are balanced, so the acceleration equals zero. So that's just important to keep in mind. Throw that in there. So now let's talk about the x direction, right? Or as what, what we have called the x direction, which is really just the parallel part to the ramp. All right, so some of the forces in the x direction is also equal to ma, but ma is equal to zero. So some of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Okay, what's the positive force in the x direction? That's tension, right? Tension's going up the ramp. What's the negative force? M1g sine theta. Now the way I drew these, it looks like tension is way bigger than M1g sine theta, but we know that the forces have to balance, right? Because tension minus M1g sine of theta, that's the sum of the forces in the x direction, equals zero. So tension equals M1g sine theta. Now here's the problem that I see. This is one of the biggest problems um, that, that I see among students who are solving, especially physics one problems for the first time, but even into like physics two, possibly even physics three, right? This is something you need to stop doing, right? And what is that? They will plug in values for M1 and G, right? Because I told you from the beginning, M1 is 0 0.5 kilograms, and everyone knows that G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So what I see is 0 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of theta, right, on this side. And that's, that's super bad, right? It's correct, but it's bad. And the reason it's bad is because now instead of carrying just M1 around when you're trying to solve your problem, you have to carry around this whole 0 0.5 kilograms. And instead of carrying just a single letter G, you have to keep track of a whole 9.8 meters per second squared. Not only that, but you're also carrying around units. Now, even worse than this method is something else I see, which is just 0 0.5 times 9.8 times sine of theta, right? That's even worse, because now you don't even know what units you're carrying around. So when you get to a final answer, if you didn't make any mistakes, then you'll be fine. But if you even made a slight mistake, you won't even be able to check your units to see if you got a correct answer, right? Because uh, if you get to a final answer and you plug in units for everything before you plug in numbers, you can at least tell if you were on the right track. And so that's why this is a huge problem, right? We do not want to do that. Um, certainly, as I said, one of the biggest physics mistakes. So we keep that, right? We keep the... Uh, we keep it all in terms of the variables without plugging in any numbers until the very end. Okay, so let's just solve the rest of the problem since we're already here. So let's do summation equations for this one now, right? So there's nothing in this, uh, this is our new x and y direction, right? And there's nothing in the x direction, so just y direction then. That's going to be tension minus m2g, except that's the trick. It's not tension minus m2g. Tension is in the negative direction, so it's M2G is in the positive direction as we have drawn it, right? This is our direction of motion, uh, M2G minus T, okay? So some of the forces there, let me get black out, so some of the forces there is equal to MA is equal to zero. And what is that sum? That's M2G minus T is equal to zero, tension equals M2G, okay? And why do we even do this? We solved for everything in terms of tension because there's not an easy formula for tension, um, especially physics one, class, right? So we solve for things in terms of tension because you can say, well, if A equals B, tension equals M1G sine theta, and A equals C, tension equals M2G, 
right, then B must also equal C, right? That's just easy, um, kind of like you're almost a geometry proof of sorts is where you learn to do something like that, right? And so then you can just write, well, M1G sine of theta is equal to M2G, and it turns out acceleration due to gravity doesn't even matter. So if you're carrying around that 9.8 meters per second squared the whole time, it doesn't even matter, right? You didn't even need that. And so what you end up seeing is that theta is equal to the inverse sine of M2 over M1. So the hanging mass divided by um, the mass on the track, right? And that would be your final answer for that problem. So once again, to recap, do your free body diagrams always. Always define your directions of motion, right? And, and so I defined an overall direction of motion, right? Even though the car is not moving, I still said this is how, if it did move, this is how I would label positive and negative, right? And then you solve for the objects in the, in the, in the diagram separately. So I'm solving the left side first over here with this cart, and then I go and solve the right side with uh, this hanging mass. You do your summation equations for each, okay? Turns out that the y direction didn't even matter over here. Uh, we didn't need to do that, but I showed it anyway, just in case, uh, you know, you might not be certain, and so it's, it's good to do it anyway if you don't exactly know what you're solving for in the problem or how to go about it. But then it turns out, okay, well, the x direction there, that's tension, and I see that the hanging mass also has a tension, and so that's uh, a variable that I can get rid of by using these summation equations. And so you get rid of tension by just using this logical argument here, right? And then from there, I'm able to uh, solve for the angle theta at which this system is balanced. And so now, now the power of this is it doesn't just work for the mass th the masses up above, it works for any M1 and any M2, right? Assuming that it's mostly frictionless. And so, uh, and, and the, the forces would be balanced here. And so that is the power, is that now we actually have an equation that is, is generalized to this whole problem, regardless of the masses that you put on there. And so doing this kind of problem, um, even though it's easy, it, you can definitely learn a lot um, just by seeing the mistakes that others make and by not making them yourself. Um, there's definitely a lot to be learned about the problem solving process in solving physics problems. So anyway, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.